Hey everybody, I'm joined here by my friend Steve and we are going to show people how to play the Star Wars CCG game using these two packs. I will be posting the deck lists in the video description. Please customize the decks as you need see fit, but uh, that's sort of the objective of this video and we'll talk a little bit more about these decks. Let's just look at them. So there's a dark side one and reminder dark side cards look like this and there's a light side one. There's 60 cards decks, so 60 cards is known as your life force, and it comes with a handy rule book. Before we jump into playing a match, I want to review what the card types are. So I think folks find these and maybe they wonder, so this is called a character card. So this is a power, an ability, and a deploy, and a forfeit. And we'll go over those concepts a bit later. So he is black and the light side version is sort of light gray. Then we have a ship, so this is a Star Destroyer in this case, so they're blue. Additionally, we have a vehicle, so this is an ATST. We have a smaller ship, so this is a TIE Intercept, and there's sort of, both of these are mirrored on each side. You have a location, so this is a key component of Star Wars CCG, are the locations. So, this is the Endor Great Forest. You're going to deploy characters, and they're going to inhabit the Great Forest. So those are the locations, and then we're going to finish off with a Lost Interrupt. So this is a card you can play at any time. You're going to be able to play this, and your opponent might have a counter. So this is going to play this, and it's going to go into your Lost Pile. Then you have a Used Interrupt. This is going to be played and then recycled back into your deck. And this is something called a Starting Interrupt you would use to begin the game. And there's one more thing called Effects, which are passive. So these are ongoing buffs to your deck. Our last card type here is not used in a lot of decks, but they are weapons. So everything ranging from blasters to tie cannons to capital ship weapons like this in intruder missile. So let's get to it. In this game, you are deploying characters at locations. How do you deploy characters? You examine the force icon. So we see here the red icons are for the dark side player and the blue icons are for the light side player. Before we get started, I think we want to go over some key concepts. So, Steve, do you want to walk us through some concepts? Sure. I mean, one of the main things with this game is that the win condition is pretty unique. How we'll go through how cards are lost, but the primary way is by inflicting battle damage or force strains. The loser of a battle is going to lose some cards, both cards that are on the table and usually from your hand or your deck. There's a sort of a tug of war in this game about whether to commit your starships and your characters to locations where they're vulnerable to being attacked or to kind of run and hide or maybe like fortify yourself at one location because if you have a guy, a character or a starship and your opponent does not, then you can start making them lose cards for not showing up to fight essentially. It's called a force drain. So as we shuffle up our decks, I wanna talk about the starting package. So every game, a player is going to choose a starting location. So I, the dark side player, have chosen Endor, and Steve, the light side player, has chosen Endor Backdoor. Uh, additionally, I am using what's called a starting interrupt, which allows me to deploy three effects. Effects are the passive, ongoing advantages that I'm going to deploy and use this game. I can deploy more, but this is just the starting package that I am beginning with. Uh, I am deploying these three uh, effects using my starting interrupt, and that's going to be part of my sort of starting package. And then we have. Let's begin our first turn. So in Star Wars CCG, the dark side player always goes first. And the first part of my turn is the activate phase. So I'm going to look and I see one, two, three, four red icons and then myself. So I'm going to activate five force. One, two, three, four, five. This is going to act as my currency. So this is how I deploy things. At the beginning of the game, you draw eight cards. So now I have eight cards in my hand. This inf These hands are not shown to your opponent, so my opponent does not know what I have in my hand. So if I look at these cards, <clears throat> I see a deploy cost in this white number here. So this pilot deploys for one. And how do I know he's a pilot? This icon tells me that he's a pilot. So I'm deciding that I might want to go into space. 
I can't deploy a character without a ship in space, so I'm going to deploy Saber 3, and I look, and it cost one force. So I'm going to move a force from my force pile to my uh, used pile. So I skip the control phase because I don't have anything that I could do in the deploy control phase. So I'm in the deploy phase now. I'm going to deploy a pilot as well for one more additional force. And then I'm going to deploy a site. So this means next turn, I will then get two more force to activate, to spend on deploying things. The next phase is the battle phase. I don't have anything to battle at this moment. And after that is the move phase, which I don't have anything to move. There's no other uh, star locations. Systems. Uh, <laughs> systems. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. <laughs> TIE Amazing. Fighters have no, uh, TIE Fighters have no hyperdrives. Yeah, that's right. So I can't actually even go. He's just stuck there. So <laughs> uh, uh, moving along so I can't move anywhere. The last phase is the draw phase. So I have three cards left in my force pile. I can save these for next turn or I can draw them. So I'm going to draw one, two into my hand and then keep this one for next turn. And at the end of my turn, I recycle this. So this goes here, down like that. And then I pass to the light side player and I say, may the force be with you. The rule book actually says that. First turn for the light side player. We'll go to the activate phase, looking at light side force icons, one, two, three, four, five. And then I add one for myself, uh, so six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Control phase, we'll skip that phase for now, but as you'll see later on, that's when force strains happen which is when one player has cards with ability at a site or system and the opponent does not. It's how you punish them for not engaging you. We'll go to the deploy phase. I'm gonna deploy a couple of locations here first. I'm gonna play another system, another planet location, Bespin. And then I'm going to actually replace his system with the light side copy of it. There's, there's usually light side and dark side versions of almost every location. This is the light side's version of Endor. I'm gonna replace it by putting it directly on top. And then I'm gonna start bringing down some people. One thing I wanna point out is that the starting effects that we set up in the beginning, they're actually the same cards, just the light side and the dark side version of them. But one card in particular to draw attention to is called Squadron Assignments for the light side and uh, Combat Response, I believe it's called for the dark side. And this is a card that's played in a lot of decks, even for like high powered tournament decks. It lets you get uh, the matching pilots for starships from your deck. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to reveal that I've got Kari Neth. Um, she's a, a Y-Wing pilot from Return of the Jedi. And this one, one of the cool things with this game is like it gave names and little <laughs> bios to even just the most minor of extras sitting on the stage. Um, so yeah, I'll reveal Kari Neth from my hand and I'm going to look for her matching ship. And it tells you what her ship is if you read her. So I can look through my deck for Gray Squadron 2 and deploy them simultaneously. And while he does that, I put this dice there because I think it's a nice quality of life. So it just demonstrates how much power I have there. Dice are totally optional. They're not part of the rules. I think it just makes playing a little easier in person. So I'll deploy them simultaneously, which is the rule when you have a ship with its uh, with a pilot aboard. One thing we'll get into later is some ships have built-in pilots. This generic Y-Wing has a little tiny Rebel pilot helmet there, which means there's a, a built-in pilot, but some ships don't have pilots aboard. There's no little pilot helmet there. There's, there's a built-in astromech, but no pilot. So you need to put a pilot character aboard. So this is a deploy cost of one for Gray Squadron 2 and two for Kari Neth, a total of three. Deploy them to Endor. Got three force remaining. I am going to deploy enhanced proton torpedoes. This is a starship weapon and it says deploy on your X-Wing, Y-Wing, or B-Wing. So it's free to deploy on my Y-Wing. Play one more, so deploy one more star. Shall we deploy a Y-Wing here? Just to get inside my head for a minute, I'm getting nervous as the dark side <laughs> player because I have one ship at a power of four and he's putting down quite an impressive space package. So as the dark side player, this makes me a little nervous. I think we'll finish the deploy phase and move to the battle phase now. I think I'm gonna go ahead and initiate battle here and give it a try. So typically a battle costs one force to initiate, but both of us are running a card battle order and battle plan 
respectively, which makes it free to battle. Mm -hmm. So, no cost to him. The first step of a battle is the weapons phase, but that gives you the opportunity to fire weapons if you have them, starting with the player who initiated the battle. So I do have a weapon, I've got enhanced proton torpedoes. So I'm going to fire it. It says, may target a starship using one force. So I'll target Saber 3, pay one force to do it. The next thing is to just draw destiny. You draw the top card of your deck and look at its destiny number, which is the number in the top right. It's a three. Add one if targeting a capital starship. Otherwise, subtract one. So targeting a starfighter, so I'll subtract one, makes it two. She says, while board a starship adds one to each of its weapon destiny draws, two if it's on gray squadron two. So she'll add two to that. I have a four total. So my weapon total is four. Maneuver and my is... maneuver, so that's my defense in this case, is four, so it needs to be greater than four. So fortunately, I narrowly escape without getting my starship hit. So no hits. He's not out of the woods yet, though. So we'll next move on. During a battle, if you have any interrupts or any cards that can be played during a battle, you can do that. Typically, that's interrupt. One thing to note, the way the weapons phase works is the player that initiates gets the first turn, and then if I had yep. a weapon as a second, as the defending player, mm -hmm. I would then, and we'd go back and forth. I don't have a weapon, so it's going back to, yeah. to Steve here. Okay, so now we get to something called drawing battle destiny. You will draw the top card of your deck and add its destiny number to your total power. But you can only draw destiny if you have an ability of four or higher present. Now your ability is on your card, uh, is on your characters here. And so if you have a total ability spread between all your characters of four or higher, you can draw destiny. So I'll look at Kari Nath. She only has an ability of two, so it's not gonna get there. And this Y-Wing, I remember I mentioned it has a, has a built-in pilot. It says in its text, its permanent pilot provides ability of one. So two plus one's three. Yeah, I didn't get to four, so I don't have the ability to draw destiny here, which will simplify things a little bit. So, however, the dark side player by itself has a built-in battle destiny. So this guy's text says when he's piloting Saber 3, which is here, mm -hmm. he gets one battle destiny if not able to otherwise. So that's one of the reasons why I felt more comfortable deploying mm -hmm. this is because I knew at least I would get a battle destiny. I think we're ready for battle destinies. Steve, you're not going to get one nope. correct. And I draw mine off the top of my deck and it's this number right here, so three. So I'm going to add three to my power, which is four. So I have a total power of seven. All right, so I'll add my power. You'll add your power across all of your ships. So the Y-Wing has a power of two. Gray Squadron two is also a power of two. Kari Neth says she adds two to the power of anything she pilots. So she'll add two to the power of Gray Squadron two, giving me to a six power. And you said you have a seven power, right? I do, yeah, with the Battle Destiny. So he actually wins that battle. Let's go. Well, there's two things that happen at the end of a battle. The first is you subtract the loser's power from the winner's power. Seven minus one is one, so I'm gonna lose one force. But even more crucial, there's a concept called attrition, which is probably the most complicated things about battles, becomes intuitive later on. That destiny number he drew, I have to lose a forfeit value of three from this battle. The ships and the characters have a little black number in the bottom right. That's their forfeit value. That's how much battle damage and attrition they sort of soak up. I'm gonna have to lose three to attrition. That one battle damage will be included in that. Yeah, and just a quick like 30 seconds on attrition. I think this is one of the concepts that's really hard for new folks. Yeah. And, and just kind of conceptually thinking about, you know, the cost of doing battle, right? Yes. And so the Battle Destiny produces this number and it, and it says that your troops were bogged down and, and they took some, yeah. you know, it's, it's... Yeah, you know, when, when blasters and bullets start flying, people are going to get shot. Uh, even if you're the winner of the battle, you might take some losses. Yep, so exactly. All right, so I'm, I have a 4 value of 3 to satisfy here. The y only has a 4 value of 2. Same with Grace Wedgeon 2. She's got a 4 value of 4. I do have this card called Superficial Damage, which will let me forfeit any weapons I have as if they had a 4 value of 3. So I'm going to do that. It's a little bit of a trick here just to get out of this. I'll forfeit these proton torpedoes, and that will satisfy my attrition of three, and it will satisfy that one battle damage I have to lose. And I should say that normally anything you forfeit goes to the lost pile, but superficial damage says the weapons go to the used pile instead. 
That was a narrow escape for me. Okay, so for me, that's the end of the, so that was my battle I initiated. Finish the battle phase, go to the move phase. I am not going to move. I will simply draw this one force from the draw phase and pass over to. Okay, I'm beginning my second turn. So the first thing I do is activate. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one for myself, so eight force total. We are happy to have survived last turn. And now looking at our hand, we're thinking, what can we do to increase our advantage and help deplete our opponent's life force? We generally like our chances. Oh, Starter's Dryer. <laughs> we like our chances on Endor because he does not have a chance to deploy anything more. This costs six force, so one, two. Yeah, there's three, no summoning sickness four, or any other five, related kind of effect that prevents things from battling on their first turn. So you can get ambushed really quickly, like <laughs> I tried to do last turn, but he's definitely doing this turn. So I'm looking at what else I might want to add, and I have three force left, and I, I wonder what else I'd want to spend it on. As I look, I don't see anything that is super appealing, so I'm going to go to my move from my deploy phase to the battle phase. With the deployment of this Star Destroyer, we now have 10 power here. We feel pretty confident and a battle destiny, so we're going to go ahead and initiate a battle at Endor. So we have 10 power, and we first go to the weapons phase. I don't have a weapon. I would then pass it to Steve. And I forfeited my weapon last turn, so I don't either. We would then go to the battle destiny portion of the battle. I get a battle destiny. I'm going to draw it. It's a three, mm -hmm. so that's an okay battle destiny. I have a power of 10 plus three, so a total of 13. Mm -hmm. We would do 13 minus Steve's six. Yeah, so the six there. So that's a pretty decisive bat win for him on the battle. So I'm gonna lose seven force, and I have to lose attrition of three. So three of that seven has to be forfeited from the location. I will forfeit Kari Neth and Gray Squadron two. So to satisfy the attrition of three, I will forfeit Kari, who has a forfeit value of four. Okay, that'll satisfy the attrition of three, and it will also take off four of that battle damage of seven. My, my, my options are I can either forfeit more things from the location for their forfeit value, or lose cards from my hand or deck at a one-to-one -one rate. It's a bit of a tough choice, but I think the right move is to just lose um, the ship and the pilot, and then I only, I only have to lose one more card. The, the, the remaining one card for loss can come from his hand, yeah. his deck, so he chooses to take I'll it to lose a random interrupt. I don't need to get into what this does. Yeah. It's not one that's immediately useful it, to me, so I'll just dump that. Exactly. So, so many players will choose to lose from their hand because they know what they're losing versus right. their reserve deck. Yeah. Which is this. I, mean, I have Han Solo in this deck. I got Chewbacca. I got big stuff I don't want to lose exactly. just randomly. So I'll lose an interrupt that's not much, okay. much use to me right now. That is the end of our battle phase. You can only battle one time per uh, location, per so turn. I can't. Yeah. Good. I'm pleased with that outcome, although I am worried about next turn and what he might bring. But we feel pretty okay with our 10 power and one battle destiny, so we're going to draw a card from our force pile, and then we're going to leave two force there, and then we recycle. So we take our use pile, and then we put it back under. And then we pass to the light side player. So may the force be with you. Thank you. It's uh, top of my turn. I'll activate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus one for myself, eight. Control phase, once again, um, neither of us have cards of ability at locations where the other doesn't, so we'll, there'll be no force drain this turn. With deploy phase, I'll do the same thing I did last turn. I'm gonna reveal a pilot character for my hand, Kier Santaj, to get his matching ship, so I'll go ahead and look for that. So I found Red Squadron 7, which is his matching ship, and I will deploy them both simultaneously. Kier Santaj deploys minus two aboard, one, two, four, Red Squadron 7 and Kier Santaj. Got a little more coming your way though. Uh, one, two, three, four, five for Nebulon B Frigate, capital starship. 
And that's all I'm going to deploy. We'll go to battle phase now. Once again, normally costs one to initiate battle. Battle plan makes it free. So we'll go ahead and initiate battle here. The battle has begun on Endor. And I have a card which is called a react. So I have a nasty surprise for Steve because I can deploy this ship as a react to a battle initiated against a tie. So I deploy for free. And because I saved two force from last turn, I can deploy with the matching pilot. So one, two. We now have a situation that perhaps Steve did not predict <laughs> when he initially deployed. So that brings my power up to 15. And weapons mm -hmm. phase. Yeah, I've got no weapons this turn. I don't think you do either. I don't think so either. So we switch to battle destinies. So I have an ability now of the Nebulon B Frigate has a permanent pilot, ability of one. Kier Santaj has a two, they get a three. The Y Wing's got a permanent of one. So I got an ability of four. I can finally get a destiny. Good. And one thing about destinies is you only can draw one for four ability. It's not like yeah, you have eight right. ability that nope. you can draw two. So it caps out at one. There are cards that will say they add a battle destiny, mm -hmm. which are particularly powerful cards, I think. Yeah, definitely. We're both going to draw battle destinies. Yeah. Oh, brutal. I got a zero. <laughs> so he drew a zero. <laughs> yeah. They, that's what happens with locations. They don't they have, have... No destiny if there is zero. And I drew a two. It's like a critical failure in a role-playing game there. Okay, Um. so that's bad for me. <laughs> My total power right now is 15 plus two, so 17. Okay, I'm going to... 11 for me. Wait, would you say yours was... 17. 17, yeah. Okay, so um, just as before he's won the battle, uh, your attrition against me was... Two. Two, okay. So I have a, a six battle damage, because 17 minus uh, 11, uh, and a two attrition. So I'll have to forfeit a bit. You know what, I'm going to just... I'm going to forfeit the Y-Wing for two, and I'll forfeit the Frigate for six. Um, that'll satisfy total of eight, so you know, it includes seven battle damage yep. and this, this, the two attrition. So this is a good learning moment. So unfortunately, Steve had seven battle damage and yeah. he had to over-sacrifice. Yeah. But I just, I didn't want to lose. So when I forfeited this Y-Wing for two, I still had five more damage remaining. Just losing five cards is, is pretty rough. I'll just lose this frigate. That completes the battle. Yep. And uh, no attrition against him because I drew that zero battle destiny. And I think I'm not liking the odds at Endor here. <laughs> I think it's time to bug out. So move phase, uh, I'm going to move this starship. It has a hyperspeed of five, which we'll talk about. Most starships have a hyperdrive, not all. Thematically, you're kind of lower in TIE fighters, TIE LNs, TIE bombers, interceptors. They have no hyperdrives, so they, they can't move. And they have to be moved by like star destroyers that can carry them around. But the X-Wing does have a hyperdrive. So I will, you have to pay one for every card you move. Pilots go along with it for free, so. Jump to hyperspace. To figure out the range, you look at these numbers on here, which indicate, the, it's called, I think it's called the parsec number. It indicates um, how far they are from the galactic core. Indoors eight, Bespin six. As long as your starship has a hyperspeed at least that high, you can make the jump. Actually, has a hyperspeed of five, you're fine. You just jump over the Bespin. Characters, we haven't really had much action on the ground here, but they, they just sort of move one site at a time in a straight line. They can only move one per turn. Any, basically, all cards can only have make one move per turn. Great. So, I will finish. I don't have anything to draw, so I'll just recirculate and okay. pass back. I'm also recirculating my cards to start my turn, and I'm looking, and I'm going to activate a total of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's our activate phase. And finally, in our control phase, mm -hmm. we are going to something called force drain. And unfortunately, we can only force drain for one because if I don't have, I don't have an Imperial currently on Endor. I'm going to force drain Steve for one force. Force draining is a really key yeah. concept in the game. It forces people to interact with each mm -hmm. other and battle and yeah. to, to make yeah. the game a little less solitary. But the situation is here, like I was a single X-Wing against uh, Star Destroyer and two TIE Interceptors, fully piloted, not looking good for me. So I'm going to lose the top card of my deck. It's a Protender. Okay. So I'm going to then move to my deploy phase and I'm going to deploy two Imperials to the back door. So this cost me four force, two, three, four. 
That's essentially all I'm going to do on my turn. I'm gonna draw a couple cards from my force pile here and pass it over to Steve. All right, so activate phase one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, still eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go to control phase. This time I have a character with ability, this pilot, uh, Kier Santaj, at a location where he does not have a character with ability or a card with ability, I should say. Uh, so I'll force train him for one there. So this goes my lost pile. Okay, deploy phase, he's set up on the ground. I'm also gonna deploy some characters to the ground over here. One, two, three, I'll deploy a Dresselian Commando. You know, probably if we're playing a more competitive match, I would have not deployed him just yet. Uh, nothing else to deploy. You know, might as well just for the fun of it, initiate a battle. Got no weapons uh, and no other no other cards to play, so I'll pass it over to my Dark Side opponent. opponent. I have no weapons, mm -hmm. so I, I get a battle destiny. He does not, so I draw from the top of my deck, and this Ooh. is how things can get very ugly yeah. in a battle. So I drew a six battle destiny. These numbers go up to seven, so this is one of the best cards that I can draw. So my total power is only four, but I'm going to add six. So it's Ooh. now 10. Yeah, that's pretty rough for me. I have a, he's power two, gets plus one for being at an exterior indoor site. He's a power three, but his 10, ugh, that's gonna be rough. 10 minus three, that's seven battle damage and six attrition coming my way. So I'll be forced to forfeit him for two, and I've gotta lose five more. Yeah, I'll just, I'm just gonna have to lose just random cards, blind cards, so I'll go one, two, three, four, five. So I just lost a bunch of ships, pilots. Um, yeah, the game is <laughs> moving in the wrong direction for me. That's a really great example of how catastrophic a battle can be and mm -hmm. particularly the power of battle destiny. So if you don't have the forfeit at the site, then things can get very hairy for you very quickly. Yeah. And you have to start losing cards from your life force. And as you lose more cards in your life force, your choices start to winnow as far as what you can deploy, how much you can activate, and what cards you have left in your life force. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, that was three full turns. Uh, I think we're going to stop here because this video is approaching 30 minutes long and I want to keep it quick. So hopefully this covered the basics and how you can kind of start playing with either one of these. I'm including the deck list in the video description. You do not need to buy these. You can find these sealed on eBay for probably 50 each, so 100 together. But you can also just find a deck list and, and make these on your own. Um, this is just a, an easy, I think the best way to jumpstart and play this game. Uh, these decks are more fun than, than I actually anticipated. And I, I'd highly recommend um, trying it this way if you're brand new to the game, because I think the Death Star 2 sort of meta and, and where you're at with the cards available. It's complex, but in an elegant way that's not overly burdensome for a new player. So feel free to leave comments on what I missed and what I screwed up and the video quality and all, all the things that uh, went wrong with this. Uh, I'd love to hear feedback uh, and feel free to ask any questions as well on, on the rules or how to play. So as I said, I'll include the deck lists um, in the video description. So thanks everybody, have a good one.